Welcome to our first video for biology. I don't know if I've made a video on biology before for this YouTube channel, but here we are. We're going to begin with cells. So across this page, you have drawn as many different kinds of cells to make it interesting and fun, um, but they all have a certain shape to them and a certain job to do. And so that is something that we are going to try and learn about in these videos, or at least I hope to give you some of the basics such that when you do look at some of these very specialized cells that uh, you can see uh, some of their features and how that how those features can tr contribute to what the cell's job is. So let's begin. Cells are the basic building blocks for living things. Now, to a biologist, I would guess that they tend to th say that cells are the, uh, everything's made of cells. That's that's what all life is is made out of. If you talk to somebody who's who studies chemistry, they might say, "Oh no 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 no, Think, uh, uh, all 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 life is made out of atoms and protons and neutrons and electrons." But if you talk to a physicist, maybe they would talk about, "Oh, uh, all things are made of energy and proton, uh, protons, neutrons, gluons, quarks, and all these other smaller pieces." So I think it's about the frame framework that you view the world or the framework of what you're studying probably dictates what you reckon is the basic building block of things. So we are going to work with this idea that living things are made out of cells. So here's I've drawn a little muscle cell. He's got a bit of a beauty spot over here, which I'm using to represent the nucleus, but I'll explain what a nucleus is later on in the video. So. One of these, will be, I would just call that a muscle cell. If I put a bunch of them together of the same kind of cell, we call that a tissue. So this would, in, this would in fact would be called a muscle tissue. If you've got a bunch of different tissues all working together for a singular purpose, uh, we would call that an organ. Now, I perhaps haven't chosen very, um, very wisely of the cell that I'm working with here. Uh, I'm trying to draw a bu bunch of muscle groups here to kind of represent a muscle organ. Uh, maybe a better example would have been things like a liver or a brain. So, so you would have a neuron cell, which makes up brain tissue, and brain tissue obviously makes the parts of the brain. Different types of tissues would make different uh, would make the brain. So uh, that's what we're looking at here: very small pieces that build up the things that we uh, see on a larger scale. Some living things are made of only one cell, and we call them a unicellular organism. Uni meaning singular or one and cellular meaning a cell, yeah? So I've got two examples here. I've got an amoeba, uh, tends to swallow things, very, very cute, see underneath the microscope, swims very, very fast. And we've also got things like bacteria. It has got a bit of hairs on its surface and some tails to help it swim across. So those are two examples of a living thing. That's a living thing, that's also a living thing, but it's only one cell. For the rest of us, we are multicellular organisms. We are made of many cells, and quite often we're made of many different kinds of cells. So here I've got, drawn a picture of a cat. Uh, the cat is made of many cells. So we've got skin cells, we've got brain cells, uh, we've got probably a whole bunch of different cell types within its eyes alone. And then you've got things like cheek cells, tongue cells, muscle cells, all kinds of cells inside. And they all uh, come together to create this organism which we know as a cat. Next thing, cells are very tiny. So, Coming back to this thing, they are very, very tiny. We can't see them with our natural eyes because they are that small. So we need to have a whole different language, a whole different way of, of describing exactly how small they are. We use some new terms here. So you're familiar with centimeters and meters. Well, we use a different one called micrometers. This one here, I've drawn a quick cell. It's a human cheek cell. And it is 50 micrometers in, in diameter from, from here to here. A micrometer is much smaller than meter. So if you can imagine meter, centimeters, millimeters, micrometers. A micrometer is one millionth of a meter. That means if I got a million of these, it would add up to one meter in length. Can you imagine that? A meter ruler and you cut it up into a million pieces. Very tiny, very hard to see. And some things are even tinier than that that we need to use something even even smaller to measure that. And so maybe some of the features perhaps inside of the cell, or maybe there are some things in biology that are even smaller than, than cells um, that you're looking at would need a different kind of measurement. And that would be the nanometer. Nano means very tiny. And so we've got the symbol NM. And that is one billionth of a meter, very tiny. 
I should also point out that the micrometer here is a very special symbol. It's got a bit of a tail on the front of it. It looks like the letter U, but a bit of a stem on the front. Perhaps like the letter H, but upside down. Maybe that's a way of thinking about it that you can use to remember for next time. This is a Greek letter. It's called mu, which is quite ironic because I drew a cat on the previous page. So micrometers. Some cells have little organs inside of them, and we call those little organs organelles. I suppose that their name kind of reflects like this idea that they're little, they're really tiny. So I've drawn a bunch of cells here that have a nucleus in each one of them. You can see those old beauty spots that I have drawn earlier. Um, those are a, a nucleus. Each one of them has a little nucleus inside. That's what I was trying to indicate with these little spots. Okay, if we've got a cell that has a nucleus and some other organelles within its, within its um, um, skin, its, its cell membrane, we would call that a eukaryotic cell or a eukaryotes. Now, you have to forgive me, I'm not a biologist, so I, I'm not 100% certain on its pronunciation. Maybe some people in the comments below can correct me, but I think I'm somewhere in the ballpark, eukaryotic cells. So these, each one here, I've got a muscle cell, amoeba cell, and I've got a plant cell, each one of them containing a nucleus and some other organelles inside. If you don't have a nucleus and some of the other important organelles, we call them prokaryotes or prokaryotic cells. The only one I could sort of find on short notice was uh, bacteria. It seems to be a very popular example of a prokaryotic cell, which doesn't contain a nucleus. It has other things inside, but the main feature that's missing is the nucleus. Let's move on. We're gonna get started into some of the basic cell organelles, but I might leave that to the next video clip just to make the videos short. So I'll check in with you guys later.